JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week September the 6th until September the 10th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommend recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read uh, the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, last week we did not have any central bank decisions on the agenda, but we do have three on uh, this week's uh, schedule, and those are the ECB, the Bank of Canada, and the RBA. With, uh, the hoggish, with the hoggish voices within the ECB getting louder, it would be interesting to see whether there will be any information with regards to the slowdown in quantitative easing purchases. As for the Bank of Canada and the RBA, there are chances for both banks to delay their own tapering uh, processes, but let's take things uh, from, uh, in more detail and from the beginning. Today appears to be a relatively light day, with the only release worth mentioning being the UK's construction PMI for August, which is expected to have declined to 56.9 from 58.7. Markets in the US and Canada will be closed in celebration of the Labor Day. Now, on Tuesday, during the Asian session, the RBA decides on uh, monetary policy. At its latest uh, gathering, this bank maintained plans to extend its uh, quantitative easing uh, purchases beyond September, albeit at a slower pace, with officials reiterating the view that interest rates are likely to stay at present levels at least until 2024. Now, with the nation struggling to quell its worst uh, coronavirus wave and officials warning that worse is yet to come, some market participants uh, raised bets that the bank may decide to maintain the current pace of purchases and perhaps delay, delay its tapering beyond, uh, beyond November when it said it will uh, re-examine its uh, policy plans. Another scenario on the table may be for the bank to avoid rocking the boat at this gathering and indeed proceeding with the planned tapering, but in November they may decide to delay any further reductions until they, the epidemiological uh, picture improves. Now, as for the US, it has been on a recovery mode since, um, uh, since August uh, tw uh, 20th, with its traders taking advantage of the weaker uh, US dollar and the improvement in the broader market sentiment. However, a dovish RBA and especially a decision not to taper at this gathering may wake up uh, the bears and push the currency back down. Now, in case the second uh, scenario take flesh, takes flesh, perhaps the vaccinations, uh, perhaps uh, due to uh, the vaccinations accelerating recently in Australia, we would expect a smaller slide, which could eventually prove to be temporary as market participants already anticipate some degree of uh, dovishness by the RBA. Now, as for Tuesday's data, during the European session, we get the German ZW survey for September. The current conditions index is forecast to have risen to 33 from 29.3, but the economic sentiment one is anticipated to have fallen to 30 from 40.4. Eurozone's second estimate of the employment change and the GDP for the second quarter are also coming out, but they are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. Now, on Wednesday, the central bank torch will be passed to the Bank of Canada. Last time, Canadian policymakers appeared uh, less hoggish than expected, saying that they continue to see the output gap closing in the second half of 2022, which suggests that uh, their expectations over when they may start raising interest rates have not come forth. What's more, both the headline and core Canadian inflation rates uh, for July declined uh, and the unemployment report for the month fell short of its own forecast. What's more, GDP data for the second quarter revealed a contraction. So all these added credence to the bank's view and raised questions as to whether officials will appear more dovish this week. 
As for our view, we don't expect any policy changes or bold statements at this gathering. As on September 12th, the nation's uh, federal, federal elections are, uh, are planned. What's more, this will be one of the bank's uh, smaller meetings without any updated economic projections, neither a press conference uh, by the bank's uh, governor. Such a gathering will take place in, uh, in October with market participants expecting to see whether the bank will announce uh, a tapering step uh, at that gathering in October. However, with the data coming uh, on the soft side, uh, this may not be the case and we may get clues on that front at this week's gathering. So, the Canadian dollar has been in a recovery mode uh, since, uh, since, um, since August 20th, mainly driven by the weakening US dollar and the recovery in oil prices. However, with oil prices correcting lower in the end of last week, that supportive factor may be off the table for a while. Thus, clues that the bank may delay additional tapering in October could encourage some loony selling this week. The only other release on Wednesday's uh, schedule uh, worth mentioning is Japan's GDP for the second quarter. However, this will be the second estimated and expectations are just for a small upside revision to 0.4% quarter over quarter from 0.3%. Now on uh, Thursday, it will be the ECB's turn to decide on monetary policy. At its latest gathering, uh, the ECB kept all of its set things untouched, but changed its forward guidance, saying that it will keep interest rates at present or lower levels until it sees inflation reaching 2% well ahead of its uh, end, uh, well ahead of the end of its projection horizon, which may also imply a period during which inflation mo moderately overshoots that objective. Now, our view this translates into willingness to hold rates low for much longer than the previous guidance suggested. Now, with the bank unlikely to make any guidance changes at this meeting, uh, all the attention is likely to fall on its quantitative easing programs. With uh, the economic recovery gathering pace in the block, inflation uh, in August accelerated to a rate not seen in the past decade. Uh, with, underlying, uh, with the underlying metric uh, getting closer uh, to the bank's uh, new 2% target. ECB President Lagarde and some of her colleagues consider the jump to be driven by one of pandemic-related effects and thus they don't want to rush into policy changes. However, others, including Vice President Luis de Guindos and Governing Council member Jens Whitman, believe that they should consider gradually scaling back their uh, programs. Thus, it would be interesting to see whether we will uh, get a tapering decision this week or not. In our view, we believe that policymakers will try to find common ground and not rush into any final decision at this gathering. After all, they may prefer to wait for a while more to see what happens with the pandemic and its new mutation uh, post summer. Having uh, said all that, though, they may signal that they could start withdrawing support at one of the upcoming gatherings. Uh, at one of the, of the upcoming gatherings if uh, the economic recovery continues. As for the euro, it's been in a short-term uptrend uh, mode since August uh, 12 against uh, the US dollar, which suggests that its traders may have already priced in the decision taken at the previous gathering. Therefore, anything pointing to some slowdown in purchases at some point soon, combined with Friday's disappointing uh, US employment data adding to speculation of a later tapering by the Fed, may result in uh, more advances in, uh, in uh, Euro dollar. Now on Thursday, we also get the UK monthly GDP for July, as well as the industrial and manufacturing production uh, rates for the month. No forecast is available for the GDP, while industrial production is expected to have rebounded and manufacturing production to have slowed somewhat. Nonetheless, both the year-over-year -year rates are anticipated to have declined. At its latest gathering, the Bank of England lowered the threshold of when they will start reducing their stock of bonds. Specifically, they said that they will do so when the policy rate hits 0.5% by not reinvesting proceeds of maturing debt. The previous guidance was for the bank to not start unwinding its bond purchases until interest rates were near 1.5%. In our view, this could mean that quantitative easing tapering may start uh, earlier than previously anticipated. That said, 
Since then, inflation slowed by more than anticipated in both headline and core terms, which combined with uh, potentially soft data this week, could push somewhat back expectations of when the policy rate could hit the 0.5% threshold. Finally, on Friday, we have Canada's employment report for August. The unemployment rate is expected to have declined to 7.3% from 7.5%, but the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has added slightly less jobs than in July. In our view, if the forecasts are met, this report is unlikely to receive much attention, much attention as uh, doing traders would probably have already adjusted their policy bets and their buy positions in the aftermath of the Bank of Canada decision. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.